gonna smile, daughter. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Alcoholism is a disease that often runs in families. Sherry Lloyd, her father and her uncle, are living proof. Sherry started using alcohol when she was 15 years old. By 17, her drinking was out of control. I started drinking about every day. Every morning I'd wake up and drink, and every evening, and I'd be about two teats in the wind. Sherry had trouble keeping a job, and like many alcoholics, tried to quit unsuccessfully on her own. I tried church, and then I tried to, I met myself in the hospital, and none of those worked. I was tired of having to run every day to have a drink or a drug. I was just tired. I was just tired of running. I didn't want to live that way anymore because I knew that wasn't me. Last year, worried about herself and her daughter, Sherry Lloyd sought help again. I stayed away from my home for a month, never called anybody to let them know if I was alive or dead and I'll come to UNC emergency room and they recommended me to Freedom House. Freedom House is a nonprofit residential treatment center in Chapel Hill that has served alcoholics and drug abusers for 30 years. Director of Freedom House, Trish Hussey, has worked with Sherry since she arrived. She has been one of those wonderful people who is so committed to her own program and to making this work for herself. Like Sherry, her father, James Guthrie, abused alcohol when he was young. Yeah, I had a problem drinking. I tried to grow up too fast. I was running with older people and got to drinking with them. And I drank. And uh, when Sherry was born, I decided to give it up. And now, Sherry's uncle, Jerry, her father's brother, is also in treatment. This is his first day at Freedom House. Yeah, we're at the right place. No doubt. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here too. I'm glad you're here. The first step of treatment is detoxification, safely eliminating alcohol and drugs from the body. What we do here is we bring people from their last use to seven days clean. And some of that is medical, some of it is just uh, a caring, safe, place for people to get clean. This is me today. This is how I felt yesterday. Oh, oh balled up, dirty, filth. But today, this is, this is me. This is how I feel. Pure, unclean. I feel good about myself. I've made a change. Alfonso That's Harrington has be. been drinking for 16 years, abusing drugs for seven. This is his ninth day at Freedom House. I couldn't have told you this a couple weeks ago, but today, you know, I feel great. I feel like, you know, uh, there's no limits. Detox treatment at Freedom House includes structured days in which patients are kept busy with group meetings, including Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. The goal is recovery. While alcoholism is treatable, a cure does not exist. Dr. Fulton Cruz is a scientist at UNC's Bowl Center for Alcohol Studies. People now t often don't get into treatment until they are quite destitute and, and disrupted. And our hope is that by doing our research, we can block the progression from experimentation with alcohol, which is very common, to addiction to alcohol, which is also very common, but doesn't happen in everyone who has a drink. Dr. Cruz and his colleagues are looking at how alcohol damages areas of the brain that control emotions and decision making. And this is an alcoholic. And here the black areas are fluid, uh, what we would call cerebral spinal fluid. And you can see that in the alcoholic, the ventricles, or these big black areas, are are uh, various holes in the brain, as well as the folds of the brain on the sides, the sulci, are very much enlarged. And this indicates that, in fact, the mass of the brain is decreased in an alcoholic. Besides bad health effects, alcohol and other drugs can have a devastating impact on a person's life. Only a few months ago, UD Dean was a mainframe computer programmer, earning $60,000 a year. Now, because of drugs and alcohol, he's destitute. I've got to find out what's going on inside of my head. 
what makes it, what what is it that makes me want to use? You know? It's the same. I, I got the education, I've got the knowledge, I got the know-how, but I keep abusing my own body for the sake of being high. It's not worth it. I, I've got to actually get to the root cause of my problem. You know? And I don't know what that is. Experts say you're alcohol dependent if you develop a tolerance to alcohol and can't control its use. If you spend a lot of time drinking and sacrifice work and relationships in order to drink, despite physical or psychological consequences. The night before coming to Freedom House, Judy spoke with his 12-year-old son. That alone was a spark for me to do something, you know. And I thought about that along with my all the suicidal thoughts. Just, well, I do have something to live for. You know, I do have some things I need to accomplish. As for Sherry Lloyd, her six-year-old daughter helped her refocus her life and priorities. She's in front of me the whole way, and I know I'm not going to drink again, or ever, because I can't have fun drinking anymore. Recovering alcoholics say the hardest steps to take are admitting you have a problem and then seeking help. One former patient at Freedom House has been through several treatment programs over the past four years. He's now been clean for 15 months. Michael Turner offers this advice. I would like to say if anybody does have a substance abuse problem, try to get some help for it. And uh, it does make a difference. It's not cool.